welcome back to another art vlog. I'm Jada and I have a couple cool things to share with you. The first cool announcement is I finally signed up for a P.O. box and I have the keys right here and I'm super excited. <laughs> and I'm super excited because that means I'm one step closer to opening up my website and my shop and being able to send out things to all of you. Um, I'm really excited. I, I feel like this step, I've been thinking about it for so long and just debating whether or not I wanted to open up a P.O. box right now, but I think this is the right step and it just moves things along a lot faster than um, I was going before. The next thing is that I decided to pick up some hot press paper and experiment with my new palette that I've been sharing here on the channel. And if you aren't up to date on my back to watercolor episode and episode two i decided to make another palette of watercolors just to practice with skin tone mixing and my and to practice with my split primaries because i'm not very familiar with them and i feel like i need to learn a little bit more about color mixing and split primaries are a good way to learn I recently added two new colors to that palette and I will share them with you now. So in this palette, I added two new colors. So I added Alizarin Crimson here and then I add, and the second color I added was German Greenish Raw Umber and I'm excited to test these colors out. I know that I really like to mix black with Alizarin Crimson and when I use this color with gouache I can make some pretty cool like purplish black so I'm interested to see if I can still do the same thing with this color and watercolors and then for German Greenish Raw Umber I'm just curious i just want to try it <laughs> i also picked up some cold pressed paper so i've been trying out different cotton paper so i have this large board um so this is 10 by 14 inches and i really like painting on a large size paper both of the student grade watercolor papers that i have that are like 25 percent cotton are in this size and i have it in hot press and cold press so i decided to pick up the same brand in cold press and it definitely has an interesting texture i haven't um painted anything like portrait or anything on this paper yet but i did use the hot press paper um in one of my recent art submissions and i really did love this paper i want to use it again but i also really like the i really like the arches hot press paper too so both of them work really well i was just curious about how the cold press paper would work because i do work with a lot of granulating colors and i really want to love cold press paper because of that reason so maybe I will learn to love this one as well because it's a little bit different texture wise than the studio grade paper which I don't really love I was I was doing some test swatches with the paper but then I kind of took a break because it's definitely a lot of work um, as you can see lots of paint swatches here and um, I didn't even write down like the color that I did for the third color because I was just really tired. Also I realized that some of the greens that I have on my palette I don't really need or want because they're very similar like sap green and hooker's green like the mixes with Hansa yellow light are pretty similar. Um, maybe they will be different with other mixes but right now I only have space for like two colors so I might um continue with this but i think i might scrap it and try a different method maybe cut this into fours so i'm not making such large paint swatches and i can kind of shorten it because around i'll say like around here like halfway all the colors start looking the same like i can't get any darker um and that's just mostly because i'm not really great at color mixing and like diluting versus like getting really thick opaque watercolor out of my paints I'm just I just need to practice more with um, watercolors and my ability to like mix them together so 
I think this would be a really great exercise and also just a way for me to learn my colors more and what I can mix from each palette. And then also when I run out of those colors, what colors I want to keep on that palette versus what colors I want to scrap and other colors that I want to add and test out. So I definitely want to continue um, with this idea, but I think I'm going to scrap this piece of paper and try again um, in a smaller size. And so I can just, you know, have more than probably just two swatches per paper. I want to give you guys all the updates, but I did just come back from work, so I'm super hungry and tired. But yesterday I was off, it was my day off, and I worked on this painting. It's almost done. I just have like a couple of parts, so I have the little um, ribbon uh, bow here, and then I have the Bird of Paradise flowers to paint. I'm sure I'm going to talk a little bit more about the painting process when I get to that part of the video and I hope you enjoy me talking about this painting. Um, I am using cotton paper so I'm using my Arches um, hot press cotton paper and so it will be an original that I will be putting on my shop once it's open and I'm really excited about this painting. I'm really happy with it. The one thing um, that I always forget is like in the moment of painting like the paint has not settled so you don't really get the accurate colors and like the color shift and once the paint has settled and everything looks so nice like I don't know I really love it before I was questioning it but I actually really love it now the plan with the scarf or like the ribbon what I've been thinking is to do like a yellowish like a soft like buttery yellow color like a warm yellow um the mixture that i have been using in gouache is super transparent because i'm using cadmium yellow and that's a very transparent yellow even in gouache so i do have to do like multiple layers or very, even when i have very thick paint i have to do like multiple layers so i'm not sure <sighs> right now it's like my best mixture for the warm yellow that i'm looking for but I'm not sure if I want to use it, so I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm just throwing out some ideas. For the Bird of Paradise flowers, I'm, I'm thinking I will do them in gouache so they kind of stand out um, on top of the watercolors. And that's about it for right now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to work on it tonight. I could finish it out tonight, but I think I'm going to take a break. For the next couple of days so I am changing my schedule um, for my like YouTube videos and also for my like work-life balance because I am a full-time um, worker and my schedule isn't really like my schedule isn't very consistent so I could be working weekends or I could be working Monday through Friday and have weekends off like it's not it's not very consistent and because it's not very consistent my video uploads are not very consistent so I've been thinking about working on like YouTube and painting and one day my shop um, working on it Monday through Friday and then taking the weekends even if I am working my other job my other nine-to-five like work like just taking that time off um, like if I'm working that day I'm coming home and I'm not working on YouTube or painting or anything else I just want to you know relax do some other hobbies um, just like find other things to do I'm not exactly feeling burnt out but I am feeling a little bit tired. I've been, I guess, making a painting every week, like painting every week. And every day that I've been off, I've been finishing a painting. And then the next day off, I'm working on editing the YouTube video for that painting. So I guess <laughs> I'm not tired of painting, but I am tired. So I've been thinking, I've been thinking that I want to take some time to have some time off. And I think the weekends are the best bet for me right now. Um, and then I've also been thinking of possibly trying out clay art just as like another medium for me to express myself and get ideas out. I have three different like clay figurines or like sculptures I want to do. Um, but I think I need to finish what I've already started, like getting my website out there 
opening up my shop before I dive into doing some clay stuff because that's gonna take me you know some time research and money to get all the supplies and see if I actually like it because I might end up not loving it or find it difficult and sometimes I am a little impatient and I'm like instant gratification um, so it might be a little bit um, before I actually get into some clay art, which will give me time to actually think about it. I think it might be a little bit of an impulse right now to just kind of do something different. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Just, you know, taking things slow, taking my time, finishing other projects before I dive into another big project. I have also have like other things I want to do. Like I want to like make my own watercolor paint. I want to make my own sketchbooks. And I have like bits and pieces of those supplies already. Like I got some pigments and I have like ways to like make watercolors but I don't have binder I don't have like the glass um, palette to like mold the paint on um, and then for like book binding I need like backing boards I need like I just need other supplies <laughs> and I don't have that right now so I have bits and pieces of supplies of things that I want to do but I just haven't fully committed to that because I just I just want to finish other things before I dive into trying to do paint making and sketchbook making. Um, yeah, so just some thoughts that I've been having. Um, I definitely want to try to do clay art. I don't know why, like I wasn't really interested in it before, um, but lately I've been thinking about making these three different um, figurines and it's just been stuck in my head and I don't know, maybe I just need an outlet to get it out and I feel like right now my current art style um, and like my abilities my art abilities don't allow me to be able to express what I have in my head um, just because I'm not super familiar with figure work and like drawing figures I feel like I'm kind of stagnant or I'm just not able to express myself in the way that I want to because I can't accurately draw a figure yet um, so maybe like clay would be a good way for me to do that anyway I feel like I'm rambling so <laughs> let's just get into the rest of the video and maybe I'll ramble some more about these ideas but let's put some painting in the background so you can have something to enjoy watching all right let's get into the video <laughs> Oh, 
stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know All in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Over Jada here. I'm an artist who makes cozy art videos to keep you company. I like to share my art journey here and on Instagram as a self taught artist looking for her creative voice. Thank you so much for being here and keeping me company. This video has a lot of rambling and just talking in general. Um, so I hope that it is something you can put in the background to keep you company while you're doing your own artwork or maybe you're just doing schoolwork too. That's totally fine and cool. Let me know what you're doing while having my video in the background. I thought I would take this time to talk about my thoughts about spending money and starting an art business. I guess now that I'm in my mid-20s, it's very hard for me to justify spending money. I've always been spend shy where if it took a lot of money up front, I will spend days and months just looking at reviews, looking at what my peers are using, uh, saving websites, comparing different brands, and then sometimes I wouldn't even commit to what I spent months looking up and wanting to buy and I think the same thing kind of happened with starting my art journey because um, I know that in order to be somewhat successful you do have to build a community and my community is very small but I appreciate every single one of you um, I just don't know or I just don't feel like I can do what I want to do just yet I don't know it's really it's really weird so to explain it better I I feel ready to sell my artwork but I don't think I have the numbers to do so if that makes sense and I know it's silly and numbers shouldn't really matter um, but I want to build a bigger community before I can fully commit to buying the supplies that I need to be able to make art prints. Just because I'm afraid that no one's going to want to buy an art print from me. I've spent years gathering items, saving websites, so I know where to get the best supplies I need and can afford to start selling prints of my work. But I'm also afraid that after spending all the money to buy what I need, it won't pay off. I guess I'm hoping that it would and I'm excited to move on to the next steps. I finally feel ready and it's been a difficult year of trying to build an audience and I'm afraid sometimes that my dreams won't become a reality. I also have this thought that if people did see my start and like where I am now, like in the future, once I'm, you know, more established, I feel like that would encourage other people to also commit to their art journey or whatever dreams they have for themselves. I think also coming from a background where money was talked about as a resource that always was not enough or running out, that is very hard for me to justify spending money on what I want. I guess I'm trying to say that I'm doing a lot of things that make me uncomfy and making art, putting it out there, filming myself, talking about money in general, and just talking to people um, are all new things and some of them are unknown and that can be kind of scary and uncomfortable sometimes, but I feel like 
in order to grow as a person, we often have to step into the uncomfortable zone of being an adult and making decisions, especially when you're trying to grow a small business. I'm sorry that I'm going on a tangent there. I guess I just wanted to share that all with you. I decided to use masking fluid to mask off the lighter parts of the painting in the hair. I wanted to layer wisteria and lavender mixed with my chordacridum coral um, to make some petal-like shapes in the hair and around the painting. And the reason why I bought the masking fluid was to be able to do effects like this and improve my paintings and, you know, experiment with it. So I thought this would be a fun way to use the masking fluid and get those lighter watercolors on top of the darker watercolors.
I really like this blue, but every time I use it, it's always super watery and I don't know why. I like, I don't know. I give it a good shake and I kind of beat it up a little bit in here too, but I don't know. It always comes out really watery. I don't know why. But I did use this blue when I painted the blueberries in my painting um, and I was thinking that I wanted a dark blue um, for like parts of the painting here for the bird of paradise painting I don't know this blue always comes out super watery see it's like really watery for some reason it's like it can just tilt it and starts running you know This is, by the way, the same palette that I used from the last painting when I painted Bird of Paradise Flowers. In the second episode, I used a little bit of gouache to paint the Bird of Paradise Flowers and I guess I could just use the same palette and use the paints that are in here, but I do need more greens. So what I think I had was olive green. So I'm gonna throw that in there too. And then I also had maybe some yellow ochre. I'll just use what's on that palette. Um, hmm. I think this time I'm gonna mix my purple instead of trying to pick up what's on the palette. I'll use what's on there. Because I'm not ready to invest in other creative outlets so like doing clay art right now, I decided to pick up playing Animal Crossing again. I wanted to continue uh, redesigning my island because it's completely not finished. I don't think I've played Animal Crossing since last year Christmas so there's a lot of Christmas decorations about and I just have this vision that I want for my island and I think it would be a good idea to use this as a creative outlet while I am working on other projects just so I have something else to do and because I do miss playing video games, I am going to be playing a new game pretty soon that I pre-ordered from a Kickstarter, which I'm super excited to share. And um, with this new schedule of me working Monday through Friday on making art and making YouTube videos, I want to dedicate the weekends to doing things like playing Animal Crossing and having fun and going out and meeting my friends and not feeling like I have something waiting for me. I can just be in the moment and enjoy just being with my friends and doing things that I like doing other than art because I love doing art but I just need other things to do too. Bird of Paradise flowers definitely have a very special meaning to me and I like to incorporate them a lot in my art. I'm not very good at explaining things but I'll definitely try <laughs> to explain why I love these flowers so much. 
So I think it all started when I went to South Africa and I saw the Bird of Paradise flowers for the first time in real life. I painted it in my journal that I took with me and wrote down all the experiences that I had while studying abroad there. Afterwards, I became almost obsessed with the flowers and their meaning. I take a lot of meaning from the actual name, Bird of Paradise. Paradise to me means a lot of different things like dreaming, hoping, having all these goals that I want to accomplish, having these dreams that I want to come true and ultimately make my own paradise. I like to illustrate these flowers in my art because it's like it's like I'm planting little pieces of what I hope my paradise would be like once I do achieve my goals while I work on living the life I've been dreaming of. And I really like how bright and also warm these flowers can be depending on like the color palette you choose. I think they always have a level of brightness and brightness to me means hope and I, I do gravitate a lot towards warmer colors but when I paint these flowers it feels like I'm bringing a bright light to what my goals are and what I hope to achieve in my life. Sometimes it's definitely hard for me to know that I am growing as an artist and then I have to take a step back and just compare myself to my future self and not compare myself to other artists and their journeys. I look at my art from last year spring and then I look at my art now and I see that I'm growing. I see that I can I see that I can paint a lot faster than I was able to before. I realize that I can paint a lot more than I used to before without feeling burnt out. I'm excited about the ideas that I have and that I want to share with all of you. And that wasn't always the case last year. When I look at my paintings, I'm happy to see how far I've come. And I do see that I'm only getting better every year with time. Thank you so much for being here and I hope this video kept you company with whatever you were doing today and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, take care. Hello, Mona Lisa. I can't shake the simplest feeling Beyond the ghost We stand on the opposite shore Hello, Mona Lisa. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my holy hope.